Stan, from delving deeper into Linda Anderson's story, what's your takeaway on her life, whether you consider her the victim, the victimizer? I think she's both. I think Linda Anderson, uh, which is what makes the movie interesting, is both the victim and the villain. Uh, as a parent myself, that's what drew me to the material, is that kind of gray area that everybody lives in in this movie. There are no heroes, there are no villains. Everybody lives in kind of that place between being a hero and being a villain, and I was kind of interested to see if I could keep the audience from feeling one way or the other, if somebody wearing a black hat or a white hat. And Linda Anderson, I think, tries hard, but makes some very, very, very big mistakes in creating a home life for her girls that lead them to a place where they think there's only one way out. Right, and you do keep her uh, somewhat likable, definitely throughout the film, and I love how you have the fantasy mom image throughout. I think that's great. Um, which brings me to my next question. As you mentioned, uh, you know, you were drawn to the story, but you were a producer for 30 years. What was your decision now to go and be the director of this film? I had made so many movies and uh, had reached kind of the, the, the pinnacle after winning an Emmy and being nominated multiple times. and. I really wanted to try and direct and uh, see if I could do it after all this time, after complaining about directors that had worked for me, and so decided finally to uh, take that shot. And uh, it was this piece of material that I had originally developed as a television movie that was just far too dark to make. And so I put it on the shelf, and, but it always kind of nagged at me, and I felt like it was the most compelling story I knew out there that I could make at a price and get my first shot. Well, looking at your bio, I know that you have a passion for bringing a voice to people that are, you know, physically or mentally challenged. So in what sense were you bringing a voice to Linda's story, who was also marginalized in her own way? She's a single mother facing, facing addiction. Um, well, I think everybody in this is a victim. I think uh, Linda's a victim. I think the girls are victims. I think the little boy's a victim. And I think there's a lot of guilt to go around for how the girls ended up in this situation. And I wanted to see if I could make the story uh, sympathetic and not just sort of what you read in the headlines. Not, okay, well, this, this woman was a bad mom and so these bad girls did this bad thing. Uh, I wanted to see if I could make it much more compelling and so make everyone have a reason for their life, have a reason for their choices, and hopefully understand them if not sympathize with them. Mm -hmm. Now you've lasted in this business for so long, what's been the secret to that? Because I'm sure there's good times and bads. I bad. How have you been able to sustain? It's, it's not an easy business to be. I've always come from a place of wanting to tell good stories, and I think that's the, I've never chased ratings, I've never chased box office, I've really only been inspired by stories and if the story inspires me I try and sell it and I think that's sort of been my my luck and and staying around and being able to make three or four movies a year for the last 20 years and and stay somewhere relevant is that I'm always interested in telling a good story I also was you know mesmerized by the work of people like Billy Wilder and John Ford and Preston Sturgis and I think if you watch the older movies there's a lot to learn and part of why I wanted to direct was see if I could take some of those lessons and put them into a contemporary setting. Great, all right, thank you.